So, straight from the get-go, it's pretty easy to see that we're not dealing with an average phone. In terms of basically every small detail, this wouldn't and shouldn't be a phone you buy for most bang for its buck, but for a phone you buy for its strength, for the relaxation of not worrying about dropping your phone from time to time. Where you can put a case on your phone, it should be clear that this isn't the same as a phone that is built to last. And of course with that we get an IP68 rating as well, which means you can have it on the water for about 30 minutes at a depth of 1.5 meters. And this is done by having all the flaps on the openings, instead of the approach we see from other brands having to work out the best way to seal it off without any flaps. While it is a bit annoying when you want to charge it up, it does give you the feel of a phone that is properly made for these kind of situations. However, with every single brand, I have to mention this because it is something that I cannot get my head around. There's one flap missing and that is for the headphone jack. This phone does not include a headphone jack, even though it has plenty of space. I'm not sure why, but I, I'm not a fan of that and we already know that. So no headphone jack on this phone. It's better that you know it from the get go. But to continue, let's quickly look at the specifications you are dealing with on a phone like this. While it shouldn't be the focus for a phone like this, it is still important to know what you get with the phone itself. So, we have a MediaTek MT6750T that is an 8 core CPU with 4 cores running at 1.5 GHz and 4 at 1.0. We have 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB of internal memory which you can expand. You have a 6 inch IPS Full HD Plus display panel and it runs on Android 8.0. And in terms of battery we have a huge 10,000 mAh battery size. So in terms of specs some things will stand out, for instance the 10,000 mAh battery that clearly gives you amazing battery life. Though with that being said we also have a CPU we have seen plenty of times. The CPU works fine for normal day to day use. But don't push the CPU too hard, because it simply isn't made for that. But honestly if speed matters the most, this shouldn't be a phone for you to begin with. This is a phone truly made for the outdoor type. Now this leaves me trying to see a situation where I'm outside a lot, for instance hiking. Then having a phone like this all of a sudden makes a lot of sense. Or for instance when you work on a construction site, like my brother does. And it does happen from time to time that he drops his phone. And in that case when he drops a phone like this, he probably doesn't get a few heartbeat skips, not being sure if the glass back actually survived. To simply put it, if you don't care about specs and a camera itself but mainly needing a phone for calls, social media and simple pictures, then this is a phone you could actually consider. But I do want to showcase how the camera performs for this phone. And there are some things to cover, while the overall quality of the picture is of course not that great, it does a decent job at simple shots. But it does take a bit longer for the picture to be taken, and in auto mode the adjustment of the light itself does take a bit longer as well. But with the weather pretty much like this mostly every single day, I can't really push the dynamic range either, so I can't properly show you the result of the camera, so sorry for that. But apart from it being a lower priced phone, it is of course not aimed at being a good camera. But if I do have to shortly rate the camera, it doesn't seem to be on par, which is logical. For instance, the dynamic range in this shot just isn't that good and colors are pretty flat. So do keep that in mind when you get something like this. It is not meant to be a phone with a great camera, it is meant to be a totally different kind of phone. And as less small detail, the fingerprint scanner is properly placed on the side and it works well with only having some cases where it didn't unlock and it does unlock pretty fast. So to close this review in simple terms, this is like I said at the beginning, not a phone you buy to take the best pictures or to watch videos in the highest quality. But this is a product you buy, for instance when you work on a construction site or when you go out hiking. When you do that, I would advise a phone like this. So, what do you think about the Alcatel WP2? And do you need a phone like this in your life? If so, let me know in the comments below what you do and if it makes sense for you to have a phone like this. Either way, have a good one and talk to you guys in the next.